Shut up and sit down. What's up, guys? This is Takeover Tuesday, Episode 3. My name is Carlos Redlick, and I got David Allen on here also. What are we doing, man? How you doing today? Hey, how's it going, Carlos? Uh, good to be back for Episode 3. We're going to talk about uh, some video tricks you're going to let us know about uh, how you take over the world on YouTube. I'm going to talk about a little bit about money getting when I do my street shows and some uh, psycho nice. psychology. And we'll probably try to tie the two together. Yep. So take it away, man. Tell us, tell us how to take over well, the on YouTube. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's there's so many things with video, you know, and really, uh, I don't want to, I'm not going to make it too complicated. I'm actually going to try to make this as simple as possible so everybody can just start using it. So one of the, the ways I take over YouTube is finding a keyword right now. Everybody, this isn't really SEO type. I'm not an SEO guy or anything. Right. Um, but one of the things that you want to do is let's say you're a uh, plumber in miami right i always just use basic examples so we'll just say you're a plumber in miami and your keyword is plumber miami well instead of doing like uh you know trying to rank a few videos that are really good and really high quality to the top what i found is a lot easier is to create like let's say 20 different videos and right. then replicate those videos and there's a way to do this in the properties of the videos you can basically change the description and so and uh, re-upload videos to YouTube. So it, when you get 20 videos and you upload those to YouTube, you basically change the details of those and then re-upload them and now you've got 40 videos. And then you change the details and re-upload, now you got, what is that, 20, 40, 60 videos, you know? And you, uh, and you change these details in like, what, like a minute, not even a minute. And uh, just basically within a have a thousand videos now the whole point of this is so people will be like well that's kind of like what like spamming the internet or some shit right so what's the point of that right. well the whole point of it is uh and this works across so many different industries if you're the only person seen then you're basically competing against yourself i mean whether they like this video or they don't like this video the next video they choose is going to be you if you've got thousands of them. you know what i mean so <laughs> yeah. it really yeah. fucking matter now there's a there's a little caveat to that so uh, depending on what you sell, I would say you want to deliver more value. So like what I'm doing now in uh, copywriting, it takes it's taking me more videos to try and dominate certain keywords just because the market's so big, right? So that's what you'll kind of figure out and there's little tweaks you can do and shit uh, to like speed that up. But with certain markets, it's a lot better to do, let's say 50 content videos that are like five, 10, 15 minutes long that are really teaching and then duplicate those videos. So at least all the, you know, quote unquote spammy videos are at least really good, rich content that people are gonna like. Now, if you're selling, a, let's say a software or something like that, that's pretty straightforward. You can right. do those, like, like I used to do them for uh, one software. I'd be like, hey, uh, thanks for watching this video. Check out the link below and you're gonna be able to get, you know, and, and I'd list the three or four benefits of what you're gonna get with the software. Got that link below, and it's like a 10 15 second video, but I would have millions of them, you know. And that's how okay. I built one of my software businesses to over 4,000 a month, and that's how it was, you know. We started right. doing like crazy arbitrage or shit like that, okay. So, awesome. yeah, so I mean, that's so one one takeaway that you could do is if you're it, it doesn't matter if you're in a local market or in a broader market, just find the keywords, you know, like find the top keywords, and then think for every one of those. You're gonna go ahead and attack each one. Okay, and here's actually one I forgot to mention, like one of the most big fucking parts. Terrible. Um, when, <laughs> when you're uh, when you're naming your videos, it's very important to name the title, the it's, the title and the description especially, but the title most importantly, the actual keyword you're going after. So, uh, for example, like I said, if you're going and if you're a plumber in Miami, you're trying to dominate YouTube for a plumber Miami. Make sure every one of your like thousand videos. Plumber Miami hyphen, you know, how to get a plumber. And then the right. next video, Plumber Miami hyphen, how to find whatever. And, you know, and every single one of them starts with hyphen. Um, and that's a really quick way. Now, there's better ways. Now, if you're able to, if you have the time, I usually don't do that. I just do what I just said because it's faster and it still rank you. But if you're able to 
include the keywords of Plumber Miami in a, uh, and you change, like, instead of doing that format plumber hyphen Miami, whatever, you change every one of your thousand videos to a custom title that just includes that, that's better. Um, but if you're like, just don't have time to do it, you just want to upload a thousand videos in like, you know, 10 minutes or set them to upload at least. And uh, then that's just the fastest way. You can even go into YouTube default settings and, uh, and set all the defaults up so you do as minimal work as possible and basically just keep re-uploading. Wow. Cool, man. That's excellent. That's a really good tip. It's, I think yeah, people... it's really huge. Not a lot of people talk about it. I've been talking about it, but no one really does it. So I think they just, when they hear a thousand videos, they think they get intimidated, but it's not. Though. I mean, if you do 20 videos, 10 videos, 100 videos whatever, that are customized and then just rep those, and each time you upload, you're uploading like a hundred. And then, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's yeah. crazy. <laughs> no, that's true it's true yeah you just have to slowly build up your little uh cache of videos and then just and then get that solid base and then just yeah i mean one, mike phoenix had a a great formula that that i kind of model after too it's that 10 10 by 10 by 4 question or something i don't remember the full full thing but basically you you do 10 frequently asked question videos and then 10 should ask question videos and okay. so that way you got 20 videos really quickly and it may only be a minute or two long, but that's quick content you can get out. You know what I'm saying? Right, right. So that's a really good formula just to stir up the, the content and get you going so you don't have to sit there for hours like, oh, man, what am I going to write? You know, just figure out the top 10, the top 20 questions really and just do a video on each of those and you can just figure out the rest after. Yeah, awesome, dude. That sounds really excellent. That's a really good tip, I think. And again, it's it's not as labor intensive as it sounds, right? But, and you and you can provide value, which is what you should be doing. Uh, yeah, I mean, there's Scarlet. exactly. It's just I, I think the word is arbitrage, but I'm don't I'm not really sure. I don't know what it is, but it's just the pure takeover, just like our show. I mean, it's just really taking over the that keyword. And if you're doing that across, you know, six or ten keywords that are really searched. And you're the only person. I mean, imagine once I get to the top of copywriting and all you type in on YouTube is copywriting. I mean, that's pretty fucking powerful. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you're just, just, just going to see your mug on uh, every video. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, and the best part is Cardone talks about it. I think it's now more popular. Everybody wants haters now just because it's kind of like a fad. Like, if you right. don't have haters, you're not cool, I don't think, now. So I think the better... Uh, the best thing is, obviously, there's people who are going to be upset with you because you're knocking, you're literally, I mean, I don't necessarily believe in competition, but if there was competition, you would dominate them because you're going to take over their YouTube placements. Right. And uh, it's just going to cause a little bit of trouble. But if you don't really care because those people aren't paying you anyway, and right. unless you're doing JVs and maybe you work something out, then fuck it. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah going to promote you and say you're an asshole because blah 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 and then more people are going to want to find out if you're really an asshole then stumble across your products and services and you right. know maybe test you out and you end it's the best way i've actually had that happen people say you know what i heard bad things about uh this former product and i want to test it out for myself so i just, you know and i'm like well that's great <laughs> yeah no i think you're i think you're right about that i mean it was i think it was pt barnum who said there's no such thing as bad publicity Right. I think Donald Trump is a good example of that currently, probably in the presidential. Uh, yeah. I mean, if you're dominating the attention, then you're the one who's really ahead. I mean, I don't know anything about politics or anything, but Trump has done a really great job of dominating, dominating the attention. Every, everywhere you go, at least from all the shows and CNN and everything I see, it's all basically revolved around what Trump's going to say. Yeah, oh, it is. It is. Like, oh, what's Trump going to do now? Who's he going to call an idiot? What crazy things? He, you know, he's fucking, he's really doing He's doing some smart shit, I think. <laughs> oh, he is. You know, and people, even though they, you know, people claim to hate him, they can't stop talking about him. And so yeah. he's constantly on people's minds, and that uh, that could sway that could sway people. I mean, it's constantly in the back of your mind. I mean, that eventually you go there and say, well, I don't really like this guy, but I don't really, I hate Trump, but man, he has built yeah. a bunch of companies, and he, and he does know what he's doing business-wise, and blah, blah, and he'll just mark it down. Yep, yep. Yeah, I, I've always wanted to know, who has more Facebook fans or Twitter followers or whatever, you know, between all the candidates? That's actually pretty interesting. I'd be curious to see. Yeah, I have to look that up. That's interesting. You know, I heard yeah, that. I'm sure someone's figured it out. I mean, I'm just curious yeah. to see who has the most. Yeah, so, yeah. I, you know, it's a good, another good example of this is a, a bunch of friends and I were talking about this. This is this song. There's a song out now called Hotline Bling. 
I don't know if you heard the song. That sounds so familiar. I'm sure I have, but yeah. I just don't know the It's a song by Drake. Oh, do you want to sing it? <laughs> <laughs> if there was singing involved in the song, then I would. But uh <laughs> yeah. no, that's not singing. <laughs> if I thought that was singing, I'd probably try and replicate it. <laughs> No, it's uh, uh, Drake, of course, is a Canadian-based rapper, and uh, right, right. his song is like, uh, I was talking to a friend from Australia, and he and he looked it up, and it was number two in Australia, it's like number three in Canada or something, and it's kind of like the worst song, you know, uh, but <laughs> as a ter in terms of, you know, it's, uh, it's, you know, everything that goes into it, but it's so uh, viral, I think, because he dances very weird in the video, yeah. And everyone's made memes of this dancing. Yeah. I, don't, I actually think I do know which one you're talking about. Is that the one where he's talking about getting 3 a.m. calls or something yeah. like that? Like, yeah, yeah, I yeah. do know. That. I hated that song. And yeah. then I liked it when I saw the video because I looked at the dance. And I'm like, he looks like he's trying to do some Bhangra stuff, but like really bad, like some Indian dancing. I'm like, <laughs> right, but right, it was right. like really funny. So I, I actually did. I, I agree with you. I think. Since when I first heard it, I always would change the channel. I'm like, this fucking sucks. I hate this song. Right. right. And then I saw the video, and I just was really entertained by it. I was like, this, I like it. Like he, I think he's proving he can do literally anything he wants, and people are still gonna buy. Like he's yeah. like, how stupid can I look? And I think it still work. Like you know. And then them ones. Uh, what happened? No, no. I'm saying that's you're exactly right. I mean, there's a bunch of people made a bunch of memes. I don't know how familiar people are with uh, Seinfeld. But there's, yeah. a, you know, very famous uh, Elaine, the character on Seinfeld, yeah. dancing, and people oh, have her made, dance. Yeah, <laughs> people have made comparisons. You know, that's funny. It's funny. Eminem said uh, a long time ago. I heard in one of his interviews years ago that when uh, he puts out his hit songs, he usually gets annoyed with them, like the real Eminem. So I forget them all, but the ones that were really kind of annoying, he's like, I usually get sick of them after like the third time I listen to it, and then I know it's gonna be a hit because it's fucking annoying. Oh, I see. Yeah. Well, that's a good. Hey, that's very uh, insightful. Yeah. He's like everyone I get annoyed with after three times listening to it. I know it's gonna be a hit. So <laughs> that's pretty funny. <laughs> that's a good way to look at. It. No, but I think I think you're, what you're saying about the videos to, uh, you know, Drake in this case as a marketing perspective. And I don't know if they sat down and like uh, were Machiavellian about this and calculated it all out. But I mean that weird dancing has become then you know something that people are talking about constantly right and so you know right. like even bernie sanders who's uh you know <laughs> running for president he did his own version where he actually did the dancing so you know it's fun trying to take it that's when you know it's viral you got some yeah. old man <laughs> dancing but yeah that's great great for president <laughs> <laughs> you're trying to get the young people out to vote i guess yeah, that's crazy. That's unbelievable. <laughs> All right, well, let's, uh, that's a good segue, perhaps, into uh, what I would like to talk about today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm excited to hear that. That's really what you get pretty gritty and talk to actual people. That's a good story. Yeah, yeah, I deal with people every day, of course. Uh, people who uh, haven't listened to the first couple, perhaps. I, I do some street performing. I perform magic on the street. And one of the things... I think the biggest thing, the biggest takeaway, uh, probably, and this applies to all business, and it's the same when you're dealing with people on the street, is that uh, you're ostensibly building a relationship. In this case, a very short, quick relationship. But you're building a, a relationship with them because they don't really pay you for the magic or if you're playing a guitar or if you're whatever. Mm. They pay because they want to be a part of your story. They had an experience, and part of that experience is the relationship that you've built. They now consider you someone they like, maybe even a friend, you know? Right. And so at the end of the show, nobody lets their friends down, you know, if you've really built that relationship properly. You have to talk about money. I think this applies to other, a lot of other areas of business. People are afraid to ask for money in general. Like people right. hate sales. Uh, because they feel smarmy or sleazy about asking for something that they know is valuable. Yeah. And so it's... It's funny. Uh, McDonald's doesn't. They ask for the money first, and then you get paid. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. And even, like, 15-year-olds can do that shit working at McDonald's. It's crazy. Yeah, and even if you go to, go to a lemonade stand, they frequently, you know, how much is it? It's this much, and then they pour you a glass. Exactly. Exactly. It's the normal way of doing things. It is. People have 
get it out of their head. They, I think that's also like they just don't feel good enough that they should be charging people. Yeah, it's true. And, you know, and the street show is done kind of in re- most street shows anyways. There's a few exceptions, but most street shows are done in revert in the opposite of that. You get the product first and then you ask for money uh, at the end. And so people have a choice. You know, uh, they got to see everything that, you know, uh, they got the value up front and then they have to decide right. what's, up, what's up worth for them. So that relationship becomes very important. You'll see performers who are kind of performing at instead of with people right uh, you know involving people and so when those people are done they're like okay well that guy's very good at whatever he's doing uh, juggling or magic or something but he's uh what does it do for me nothing right you know uh, i wasn't involved you know i don't really know anything more about this guy than when i first walked up usually in my street shows i know everybody's name or a good chunk of the people's names where they're from, you know, uh, I've had many, many times where people have invited me uh, out for drinks or dinner and stuff immediately following uh, the show that they attended. Yeah, that's yeah. awesome. Which is, which is, yeah, that's just how quick a relationship can be built, you know, and people uh, giving me their contact information in other countries and stuff, you know, and really I just do, I do about, you know, I do about 15 minutes. And so you've built this quick 15 minute relationship where people say, if you ever come to Australia, you know, stay with us. Here's our contact information. Yeah. And that, and that you know, the, you know, those people aren't going to let you down uh, tip wise, uh, but you have to, but you have to mention money. That's enough. That's the other aspect. You have money has to be brought up. Now, most street performers have what they call a speech. They do what they call a hat speech or a money speech where they sort of, uh, it's like a break in the show where they talk about how nobody, like the city didn't pay to have them out here. You know, it's only the uh, kindness and generosity of the attendees right. that are going to donate at the end of the show. And they do, you know, some of them, some people play a little melancholy heartstrings, you know, uh, in speech. Other people, are, other people are more hard-edged, you know, kind of pushy, salesy type. Uh, ones, but the problem you often run into is that is that uh, you're breaking the show, you're breaking out of the show and then back into the show for the finale. You usually do it right before the finale, and so uh, that makes it tough because you kind of have you kind of uh, step out of the show for a second, which breaks the continuity of the show, and then you try to win them back, sort of you try to get back on track. Uh, there's really only one guy, and of course I haven't seen everybody in the world, but there's one guy in particular in New Orleans who's a friend of mine. He used to be a pitchman. Uh, he would travel around and make his whole living, you know, essentially selling, you know, at carnivals and fairs and stuff like this. And his show is structured completely differently. His show is structured like a pitch, so it's structured like a sales pitch. So it's all contained within. Uh, the actual show that he doesn't ever do a speech and he never breaks character and yet all right. that information is all sort of woven uh, into the fabric of the show where he still gets that message across and yet he doesn't have to be this awkward like uh, hey you need to give me money at the end nobody pays me to be out here now yeah that's what i was thinking i was like why don't why don't people just weave it in i think that that's that's on the money. I mean, if, if you can weave in the talk about money into your show, then that's, I mean, it's still entertainment. You're still being outright, but you're not kind of being desperate either. You know, no one likes being desperate. Yeah. You know, when I, when I got into copywriting, started doing copywriting and stuff, it sort of dawned on me and I, and seeing his show, this guy, uh, my friend Warpo, <laughs> he, he, uh, when I saw his show and, and saw the history of his, how he, arrived at that point it reminded me a lot of copywriting stuff because there's little tricks and stuff he's using in there uh to communicate the amount of money and stuff he wants right too so he'll include talking about things that have uh you know fives and five and ten the numbers five and ten and stuff like that and that's very that's kind of like in a, in a in, you know when you're doctoring up the sales letters and emails and stuff uh there's that sort of underlying you're tying it all back together right so uh, i think that's a that's a much better way to do it it still works the other way too it still works pretty good but i think artfully 
and it's and it's much more enjoyable, I think, for the people because they just kind of like, oh yeah, of course we donate at the end. It's not that awkward. Like, yeah. Aggressive. Yeah. Sort of thing. <laughs> yeah. I think uh, you know. It's, I think the more straightforward. I, I'm not a. I'm not a. I used to do pitches in front of like I used to do the shows in front of people to pitch them and shit. Right. But I never did street performance. But I think that's true. I mean, if you can just be kind of straightforward and maybe we w- weave it into your uh, weave it into your whatever you're doing, then obviously it's gonna yeah. it's gonna perform a lot better. It's more of an experience for everybody instead of just like a you know, hey, give me money because I did this instead of just a service. It's more of like an experience for them, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's uh, it's funny because when I see you know, I've seen all different kinds of acts and the like a breakdance act, for instance, of what break dancers they frequently ask. They collect the money before they do the finale, usually. Which is, you watch, you watch them, and, and uh, there's usually m- many members of the breakdance team. So, yeah. And they try to make it funny by saying that, you know, they learned their lesson because people left, you know, too many times <laughs> in, the, in the past and they didn't get paid. Yeah, so they yeah. try to, you know, but it is this real awkward contentious almost experience and then they and then they do the finale where it's sort of try to win people back and bring them back to that good thing but i think it's just a lot better if you never let that crescendo fall you know it's a build 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 yeah. all the, the, all the finale yeah that's that's uh that's crazy it's really interesting i mean i, I it makes me want to like go to new york or i guess one of these other places where they have a lot of street performers and just kind of check out their pitches you know yeah. See who's really raking in the money. I mean, there you can definitely make money on a busy street, you know. Oh yeah, yeah. It's uh, it's interesting too because uh, I just watched that movie, uh, The Walk. You know, mm. it's about the guy who strung the high wire between the World Trade Centers back in like yeah. seventy three or seventy four, and uh, he was a street performer. He was a juggler, and it shows him in the early parts of when he was in Paris and stuff and sort of what he did, you know, uh, how, how his act evolved and how he started incorporating uh, wire walking, even on the street, in the street performances. It was very right. interesting to see sort of some of that, you know, included as part of the thing. Uh, he did a silent character, juggled and you know, walked on the wires and did it all silently. So it's uh, a very, you know, there's just so many ways to do it. There's no... Absolute. You know, I wonder if for like, uh, I wonder if like, I was just thinking about this, like if I were a juggler or something, I'd say, right, and I'm doing my performance, I would try to get as many, I would do what I used to do and I had to like, like sell shit basically, I would try to build a big audience if I was in a big group of people, and then get ready for my show, and then after I do my show, I would just say, hey guys, thanks so much for all of your views or all of your whatever, thanks for watching me. I've got a $10 donation going on, and if you donate, you also get this free book and this CD that shows you exactly how to do what I just did, and right. you know, yada, yada, yada. So if you like that, guys, donation box is right here. Raise your hand. Who wants one of these CDs? You know, it's funny because people have people do do that in certain areas one of the things that that becomes problematic with that though is the le- is the law as a, as a street performer you're allowed to take donations but if they believe you're soliciting for a product or something you then become a vendor and then you fall under different laws yeah so that's why you got to talk yeah, hey, this is a donation as a for your ten dollars specifically ten dollar donation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you get this and whatever. That's why the we art- don't take donations. Yeah, that's why the art- <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's why the artful stuff works better. There's actually places right. where you're not allowed to talk about the de- denominations. A certain city mm-hmm. where you're not allowed to actually mention what you want. You know, it's completely open. But what people will do. And I'll give a shout out to my friend Bobby because he's kind of a uh, Bobby from uh, Kentucky because he's kind of the kind of guy that would do this and has done this. He would say instead of not asking for certain denominations, he would say that he can't ask for certain denominations. So if you're not allowed to ask for it, you would say, "Hey, I'm not allowed to ask for fives and tens out here or twenties, you know, because they won't let me," you know, <laughs> which is kind of a funny. Yeah way of circumventing the rules but, but I, i'm going to drop this 
hat on the floor and if anything seems to fall into it, you know, I appreciate it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. Right. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> so it's interesting. I, it. I think that's yeah, it's very funny to see that sort of different when you travel to different cities, yeah. what the right. relations are and what uh, what they let you do and not or try to let not let you do. Yeah, I mean it's all sales. It, it, the best it is. thing is that the people who are able to do stuff in front of others, I think they learn the fastest because you actually get to see the person's face and how they react when you ask for a pitch or a sale or whatever it is, you know. Like you actually get to see that and see the motion behind it instead of just trying to figure it out through data and statistics. You know yeah. what I mean? Oh yeah. So those guys have, yeah. I mean, if you're in front of anybody, you've got a better chance. I've always told people that if they're trying to get a, an understanding of what their current customers are like, because sometimes, you know, you've got a big customer list. If you're like an info marketer or something, but you've got different types of people on that list. You don't know exactly what your client or what your customer looks like. You're trying to get a good idea of what the avatar is. I've always told people, get your phone and call like a hundred of those people and just interview them for like five minutes and just get an idea of what they thought of your I mean, you'll get a, I mean, you have all the other ways of doing it also, but you get a real understanding of who your customer is if you actually get to talk to them, if you get to see them and even better, you know? Oh yeah, we, we often say performance, street performers, we talk about this quite a lot and we say that, uh, you know, every show has an audience. So a show has a, although there's a lot of crossover, of course, there's, the, your show has a, attracts a certain brand, certain demographic, uh, whether mm -hmm. that's families or, you know, uh, the American, the drunk American bro or whoever, right. you know, your demographic is because of how crass your show is or how hard edged, you know, yeah. will attract different people and just the way you look and stuff will attract different people. You may look right. more like, like a hippie or, or, or a, you know, gypsy or something and another person looks more formal uh it right. attracts different people uh, i think it was actually uh pen gillette famous magician you know pen and teller pen gillette started yeah yeah he started on a, he started on the street he's a juggler he was originally a juggler and he started on the street and uh, he would talk about how he was always impeccably dressed you know, and it was funny because right. it's, it's kind of one of that age old thing where uh, until, you know, when you get money, then you almost don't need it anymore. You know, it's like uh, <laughs> you look really good and you don't look like you don't need it. People give you more for some reason. Yeah. You know, it's, yeah, that's <laughs> you know, it's that's like, you know, it's like, interesting. You know, I, it's like really rich people, really rich people not paying for food and, and, and uh, game tickets or concert tickets anymore because people just start giving them to them. <laughs> that's like some sign. Yeah, you finally get it's the money to buy stuff. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's an endorsement. I don't pay for things anymore. I just take it. It's an endorsement <laughs> now. I endorse your product. Thank you. That's yeah. Well, I would love to. See. You see that quite a bit, like because people will come. You know, a celebrity comes into the restaurant and they don't pay for their food and stuff. Either somebody else pays for it or the restaurant just gives it to them. It's like you finally attained a level of success. And you got the money to pay for all this stuff, and then you don't need it anymore. I, I don't need to. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> That's the way the world. That's the way the world works, you know. Yeah, that's pretty <laughs> funny. That's true, though. I didn't really think of it that way. That's true. Yeah, it is. What it is. You still gotta go get it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's uh, let's wind this down. Maybe we've got some good uh, takeaways. I think people like uh, the one I think from my my end of things is like you want to create a. A relationship with yeah, no matter what kind of business you're in, it's all based on you know it's all based on relationships. That's why those deals are done on the golf course and uh, and over a cold beer and not necessarily you know uh, across a desk or something like that. So it's always uh, we talk about the street shows always being about the audience, uh, their experience. You know they're leaving with something and that's why they're going to tip you. Think about the person, the customer's experience. There's so many companies out there whose uh, customer service and or website or whatever it is is such a a hard thing to get through right that it, that it costs them sales and so forth like that so you want you want to leave them with, with that experience yeah absolutely the make it easy is everything yeah make it easy Starbucks for the experience yeah absolutely what about uh, in, in regards to some of your video uh domination things carlos the biggest takeaway really with that is you just got to set your mind on what you're going to take over. If you're going to do some like video domination type shit, is it local marketing or is it a big keyword like, you know, gas or 
like a crazy keyword or some shit that's really broad, then it's just going to, you're going to have a few more things, like how many views, how many subscribers you have, a few other little things to it. But if you're going after an audience that is, I mean, copywriting is, is somewhat broad, but it's still kind of narrowed down to a lot of the other keywords. The biggest thing I would do is upload like a thousand videos for one keyword and make that a minimum. And remember, you don't actually have to do a thousand videos. You've just got to do like 20 or right. whatever, and then duplicate those and, or duplicate those and then uh, re-upload those yeah. and um, name the keyword and the title for every single one. Na put a one or two sentence description uh, with the link to where you want uh, them to go and right. uh, and make sure that keyword is in the link and that's it and then just and just up the fuckload and that's the biggest takeaway and you're gonna start seeing results absolutely man great takeaway that's uh excellent I'm, I'm eager to see somebody uh in fact i'm gonna do this myself hell yeah we can't talk about uh, next week we're gonna have a uh, copywriter uh, and i hope i'm pronouncing his name properly everett farnell Right. Yeah, he's a badass. I've followed uh, some of his stuff that he posts. The guy's really good, high uh, high level copywriter, really cool guy. I think he's actually in Florida, also where I am. So that's yeah, I cool. think he, I think he is. Uh, and uh, so the next uh, the next show we do, uh, we'll have Everett for now, and uh, we'll we'll ask get him to delve into some specific uh, some copy questions and sales questions uh, as to how he uh, he makes the real big money with some of these bigger clients and so forth. Exactly, and he. Anyone, uh, I just wanted to throw this in, anyone yeah. who has any questions that they want to ask us or ask Everett, uh, send them into our Facebook page. Just shoot them into the, just send us a private message through there. Uh, yeah. What is it? It's Facebook Takeover Tuesday is the name, right? Yeah, it's facebook.com backslash Takeover Tuesday podcast. Is the, uh, That's the Takeover Tuesday podcast. Just send us a message there and we'll just see if we include that in the show. So. Hell yeah. Well, this is a fucking, this is a good episode, man. I can't wait to talk to you and Everett again in a, in a week. Hopefully every one of our listeners had a great time. Hopefully uh, took some notes and are about to put some shit into action. Yeah, man. Well, I'll talk to you next week. Sound good? Sounds good, Carlos. Have a good day. All right, man. Ciao. Take care, everybody. I would also like to mention uh, the music for the show comes from Ben Sound at bensound.com.